Well, when the Tennessee State Museum pitched this to us, we had to take them up on it. Museum curators are here to offer advice on caring for and preserving your treasured family heirlooms. This means, you know, your mom's wedding dress, your grandfather's pocket watch, even those priceless family photos. Matthew and Candace are experts on the subject. Welcome in, friends. This is fascinating. Thanks. Thank you. How do, where, okay, let's start with one area, okay? China. China, we have so many things. What do we do to store and preserve these items? Absolutely. So, uh, one big idea that kind of will apply to all of the heirlooms you might have in your house is to keep them in your home. So, if you store stuff in the attic or in the basement or in a shed or a garage, you're going to be making those uh, objects susceptible to swings in temperature and humidity, mm. and that can be more damaging than anything. Mm. So just getting them in your house is a great first step. Secondly, if you do use your china, your family dishes or ceramics, I think that's great. I think it's wonderful to actually enjoy the heirlooms yeah. that you've uh, keep you connected to your family. Um, but if you do use those and have, have dinner on grandma's china, um, you'll want to wash them really carefully by hand. Mm -hmm. So you'll use a, a soft rag and a mild soap. Dry them immediately, don't let anything soak. Okay. And then when you put them away to actually store them, it can be really helpful to use something as simple as a dish towel to kind of layer between those plates just so they're not making contact with each other. Oh, very good, very good. Okay, what about the hutch that we keep the china in? How do we preserve that? So with furniture, uh, less is more generally. So if you keep your furniture just out of the direct sunlight, that okay. can be really helpful. Mm. And then you wanna avoid using any of the sort of polishes that you might find in the cleaning aisle. Those can cause some surface buildup over time. Mm. So just dust regularly with something like a microfiber cloth, something that's not abrasive, okay. and then really enjoy kind of the original historic surface of the furniture. So you might notice some scratches or some discolor discoloration over time. It's actually better to leave that as is mm. and enjoy the history of the piece rather than try to do any sort of refinishing. Right, because it's almost like you're appreciating the story behind that little nick, maybe. Um, okay, so we got to talk about family photos. So these photos are actually from our production assistant, Matthew Jolly. It's his um, great, great grandfather. And um, he was able to get this album. How do we preserve photos like these? So that's an excellent question. And this is a wonderful um, examples of photographs you have here. And I think uh, one of the big things you'll hear, and Candace just touched on it, is same thing for photographs as other objects, temperature and humidity. So just how your furniture, your porcelain is not going to like those changes, neither are your photographs. And with that, you can certainly store them. Uh, the problem you can get with albums like this is plastic, if it's not archival quality, in the long run sometimes can harm those photographs. So it can do something called off-gassing, it can create issues. So the best thing to do is you certainly want to keep them inside, uh -huh. but if you can get your hands on things like acid-free folders, acid-free paper, in the long run that can help your photographs be stored and preserved. Uh -huh. Also sunlight, things like that, which albums can help with. Um, the more exposure you get, the more they can fade over time. And another good thing, if you can talk to a conservator or someone, an expert, um, photographs obviously now, they're digital, we print them off, but historically they could be on metal, they could be on glass, they could be kind of on paper or board like you see here. So knowing what kind of photographs you have can go a long way to helping preserve them as well. I'm gonna reverse for a second. Where do we get those albums or items to preserve our photos. Yeah, that's also a great question. So not, you don't just have to talk to a conservator. There are special companies that kind of do specialized archival material. Gaylord is one. Candace, I don't know if you have a few other examples you want uh, to share. Hollinger Metal Edge is another great source, okay. but these are things you can find online with just a quick internet search mm -hmm. and okay. really just looking for things that are acid free when you're looking for housing material can go a really long way. Okay. So. And this is all on theme with the furniture exhibition that's coming soon to the Tennessee State Museum. Tell us all about it. Yes, so we're very excited. Uh, April 20th, so this spring, we're going to be opening a new exhibition on Tennessee furniture. And this will have highlights from the State Museum's collection. So you can see over 40 pieces of Tennessee furniture. We'll talk a little bit about what makes something Tennessee, whether that's made here or used by Tennesseans. And that's all the way from the earliest days of the state through contemporary makers that are doing really innovative, amazing work with furniture today. Ooh, what's your favorite piece? Oh, that's a tough one. So my favorite that I'm most looking forward to sharing with people is actually a new acquisition. Um, and it's a desk and bookcase that has this really beautiful, interesting inlay. Mm -hmm. um, so early Tennessee makers could do some really great things with uh, creating decorative designs in wood. 
um, and it's never been on display before. So we're really excited to share that with everyone. What about you, Matt? What's your favorite piece? What are you looking forward to I showcasing? Think, I think for me, it's got to be we've got an East Tennessee 19th century pie, fi uh, pie safe or safe. We've actually got a good bit of furniture associated with food, um, which is a pretty <laughs> interesting connection. I think you'll learn how it was functional as well as our, as well as a work of art in its own right. So I think it'd be the pie safe for me, probably. A pie safe, people. I think we all need one of those at home. Thank you so much. You guys are awesome. Oh, it's going to be so cool. Thank April you. 20th, the Tennessee State Museum always has something going on. Learn something new right in your own backyard. Check them out online at tnstatemuseum.org.